Welcome to another video from Learn Electrics. Today we will look at a subject that often causes debate amongst electricians. Can you have spurs on a ring circuit? And more often asked, can you have spurs on spurs? Well, the answer is yes and no. And in this short video, we will explain all and hopefully set your mind straight on a few things. Let us begin with a standard ring circuit, as you would find in most domestic properties in the UK. We can see here that the ring is protected by a 32 amp breaker and that the wiring is in 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable. You should know that in ideal circumstances, the 2.5 millimeter cable will only safely carry 27 amps of current. So why? Is it protected by a 32 amp breaker? The answer is that because there are two legs to the ring, there will be some power sharing along each leg. The cable will not be expected to carry anywhere near its full load. This then is the problem. We need to ensure that when we install a spur, that the current in any cable will not exceed 27 amps in this particular case. A ring circuit does not have to be protected by a 32 amp breaker, but whatever the size is, we need to follow the same rules to prevent overloading of any of the cables. Here we have added a single socket as a spur from the ring, and we have used 2.5 millimeter cable for the connection to the ring. This is a good situation. Yes, it is 27 amp cable, and yes, it is a 32 amp breaker. But as it is a 13 amp socket outlet, we should not expect to draw the full 27 amps. The plug top fuse should have blown long before then. We could add a second spur to a different socket. This time it is a double outlet and it is connected by a 2.5 millimeter cable. This is still correct, as it is assumed very unlikely that both sockets of a double outlet will each draw maximum current. We could have a junction box on the ring that supplies a socket. As long as the cable that connects the socket to the junction box is 2.5 millimeters, then all is OK. And in fact, we could do this to every socket or junction box that is actually part of the ring. A single accessory can be attached to each accessory on the ring if the rules are followed. A double socket is classed as a single accessory as it is still only one piece of plastic. But two single sockets next to each other are not allowed. Unfortunately, those are the rules. Now, let us look at spurs on spurs. Here, a second socket outlet has been connected to the spurs that come directly off the ring. The problem now is that these two sockets, the spur and the spur on the spur, may be some distance apart. Somebody using the first spur may have no idea what another person is using the spur on the spur for. They may even be in different parts of the building. What if it is a cold winter's day and both users decide to connect a three kilowatt heater into their own socket in their own room? Now we have a situation where the cable connecting the first spur to the ring may be carrying all its own load plus all the load of the spur on spur and this could be very close to or even exceed the 27 amp rating of the cable. Another bad practice is to connect a spur to the ring with a reduced cable size, let's say 1.5 millimeters. A reduction in cable size is not allowed for cables that connect to the ring. It's not looking good at the moment. We cannot have spurs on spurs and we cannot reduce the cable size. Well, yes, we can if we do things a little differently. 
Here we have the same ring circuit in 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable and still protected by the 32 amp breaker. We have replaced a socket with a fused connection unit, sometimes called a fused spur. But we could just as easily have made this FCU a spur and left the socket in situ. This is the important part now. Because the FCU has a 13 amp fuse, we can't exceed 13 amps for everything that follows afterwards. Now, if we want to, we can reduce the cable size to 1.5 millimeters as well. And we can have as many sockets as we want after the FCU. We can never exceed the 13 amp fuse rating, so we're not going to damage the cable. And we can do that to every socket on the ring if we needed to. At Learn Electrics, we are sometimes asked about connecting lighting to the ring. This is okay if certain rules are followed and if this is unavoidable. An example would be a newly built conservatory. We can take a 13 amp fuse spur from the dining room into the conservatory for the sockets. In this new room, we can spur from one of the new sockets to a switched fused connection unit for the light switch. This would need to be refused at 3 amps or even 1 amp if practical. The spur supplying the sockets is correctly protected and the spur supplying the lighting is protected correctly too. That is it. It is not that difficult to just follow some very basic rules. The main one being to protect the cable from overload. A recap then on what we have done. This is for a 32 amp ring circuit wired in 2.5 millimeter twin and earth cable. Only one spur from each socket or junction box on the main ring. No change in cable size between the main ring and the spur. It should remain at 2.5 millimeters. If a 13 amp fused connection unit is installed, then the cable going from the main ring to the FCU must still be 2.5 millimeters. The cable after the FCU can now be reduced to 1.5 millimeters. Because of the 13 amp FCU, there is no limit to the number of sockets after the FCU. A switched FCU can be installed to act as a lighting switch, but this must be refused at 3 amps or even 1 amp if possible. It must not be left with the 13 amp fuse in it. Thank you for watching this video. We hope that you've learned something today. There is a sister video to this one, Spurs on a Radial Circuit. Keep an eye out for that one. At Learn Electrics, we are always producing useful tech tips videos for electricians and help videos for householders and DIY people to live and work around electricity safely. Don't forget, you can find us on YouTube and Facebook and please click the subscribe button to receive our next video. Subscribing to our channel helps us too. Thank you once more and we hope to see you again very soon.